Today's video is all about the power of thank you in medicine, along with something called the magic ratio. Want to know what the magic ratio is? Well, watch on. Hi, I'm Anthony Llewellyn, career doctor. I do lots of content to help medical students and doctors with career challenges like getting a job in medicine or becoming a better leader or manager. If you like what you see in here, why not consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you know when I do another video. On average, that's about weekly. So I'm doing today's video as a collaboration with On The Wards, which is something I'm involved with as well. And there's going to be an article on the On The Wards blog to go with this one. So I will put a link to that in the notes. I recently had the honor of presenting at the first ever On The Wards conference, and I was given the opportunity to discuss the issue of positive leadership in medicine. My presentation was about the management challenge that most doctors find themselves in when they step up to the senior role. In short, that most senior doctors feel properly prepared for the role of leading and managing other people. So the first part of my thesis was that senior doctors can positively impact medical culture by becoming better managers. The second part was that trainee doctors can learn to empathize with the management challenges of their bosses if they can try to understand why one's boss may be driven to act and behave in a certain way. Then they can see that it's often not personal and we may even be able to work with them. So this can then give it, lead to them giving us the type of leadership support we are looking for. But what about trainee doctors as leaders? Well, that was the question from the floor. Or more specifically, when am I in the leader or manager role? It's quite true that there are lots of moments in the day of a trainee doctor where they are in a leader or manager role. Just like senior doctors who become consultants, we don't need the title of manager or chief or director to be able to be required or even need to manage. So the example offered was of the resident medical officer on an evening shift being called by a nurse from the wards. Am I leading or managing in this situation was the question. Well, my immediate response to this question was, yes, indeed, I think you are. But upon deeper reflection, it would have been more correct to answer with, it depends on your behavior. You see, there are some simple things that we can do uh, in the workplace to ensure a positive culture and demonstrate informal leadership on a regular, even hourly basis, even if we are the junior doctor on the team. So two of these behaviors are effective praise and role modeling. Think about the last time you called a registrar or consultant for advice about a patient. What was their reaction? Hopefully it wasn't something demeaning or they put you off to someone else for the referral. Hopefully at the end of that phone call, or perhaps after they'd reviewed the patient and wrote in the notes, there was some sort of thank you for the referral. Now I want you to think about how that made you feel. Calling a senior can be quite a daunting experience. We know it's their job, but we're not the experts. So there's often this niggling doubt, which we call imposter syndrome, that makes us feel nervous about the initial interaction. So now think about the situation in reverse, where you are the resident taking the phone call from a member of the nursing staff on the ward. This person too may have their doubts. They may be truly concerned for their patient. That's the one that's just become your patient, by the way. Uh, but they are just doing their job. Now, finally, think about how often we're thanked for doing our job versus how often we may be told that we've done our job wrong. When you think about it, we work in a team and you're not just thanking someone for doing their job, you're actually thanking someone for helping you do your job. So most of us can relate to the emotional impact of being given negative feedback on our job performance. It pretty much happens to everyone. There are plenty of studies that show that one piece of negative feedback can linger and affect work performance for days. At times, junior doctors do need to know where they are going wrong, but how can we moderate the negative impact of this criticism? So what's the right mix of positive to negative feedback? What's the amount of positive praise we need to cope with the occasional negative feedback? It turns out that there's actually been a fair amount of study put into this question in particular. And the rule of thumb is five to one. That's five amounts of positive feedback to counter one piece of negative feedback. 
So in order to understand the difference between happy and unhappy couples, doctors John Gottman and Robert Levinson began a longitudinal study of couples in the 1970s. They looked for observable characteristics in couples who were asked to solve a conflict in 15-minute sessions. At nine years follow-up, doctors, doctors Gottman and Levinson were able to successfully predict which couples would stay together or divorce with a remarkable degree of accuracy based on a small number of predictive factors. Chief amongst these was the concept of a magic ratio of positive to negative reaction, interactions. So let's take that from couples therapy to business and industry. Granted, we were talking about couples and partners there, but actually similar results have been found in business. In fact, in business, one study shows that the magic ratio for high performing teams is even closer to about six to one. So the actual ratio might differ in workplace to workplace, but the studies show that there is empirical evidence to remind us of the power of negative interactions to overcome the positive. In my own personal career in medicine, I've never felt that I've ever overdone positive praise and thank yous. When you think about it, we work in a team and as I say, you are not just thanking someone for doing their job, you're actually thanking them for helping you do your job. So it's surprisingly easy to forget to do this. So I often try to dedicate any spare moments I have to this practice of thanking people. That's the power of thank you in medicine. So what about you? What's your ratio of positive to negative feedback? Maybe you could leave me a question or a comment below in the comments or maybe on the On The Wards blog. Do you want to hear more about leadership and management challenges in medicine? Well, if so, as I've suggested earlier, perhaps you should subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you can be made aware when another video comes out. Thank you very much for listening again and bye for now.